Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, a.k.a. PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, and hockey. We love talking about hockey on Pop Turnative. Uh, as always, I'm your host Peter Meliotis. On Twitter, goes PD Beats. Well, you know, it's 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 almost here. The 2018 NHL Entry Draft is right around the corner, and we're we've been honored and privileged to speak to players uh, on the show that will have the opportunity and the possibility to have their name called. And my guest this evening is a forward with the Oshawa Generals in the uh, OHL, with Sarah Noel. Sarah, welcome to Pop Turnative. Hey, thank you for having me. No problem. I'm going to just um, ask it right off the bat. When did you fall in love with hockey? Was it really early on? Was it later down the road? We understand your father played in the CFL. Yeah, actually, a uh, pretty funny story. Um, the first time my dad ever asked me to play hockey was around uh, five or six, and I, I told him I didn't want to. Um, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, and then uh, on my street, there was like about six or seven kids around my age who would always be outside playing hockey. And I uh, one day grabbed a stick and uh, went out and played with them. And I had a lot of fun. So I told my dad, you know what, sign me up. Uh, I want to play hockey. And that's kind of around like seven and eight. I kind of just started falling in love with it. And I knew that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for giving us a uh, non-cliche answer rather than <laughs> the, oh, you know, as soon as I touched this, uh, as soon as I put the skates on, I wanted to play. You're like, no, dad, I didn't want to yeah. play. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's interesting. Who is Sarah Noel on the ice and who is Sarah Noel off the ice? Well, on the ice, I think I'm a, I'm a power forward, uh, someone who use, likes to use his size and, uh, and I, I have some skill. Uh, I, I can make plays. Uh, I think my, my best asset is definitely my, uh, my, my speed. Um, for, for the off ice, I'm just uh, a regular, a regular uh, kid. Um, I love to hang out with my friends and uh, I have a cottage I like to go up to uh, play I'm into the the Fortnite and all those uh, video games, so uh, I enjoy all of that stuff. Who isn't into Fortnite, man? Like I, I interviewed someone recently, and I mentioned Fortnite, and the his his whole he just like gl- he just glowed, like he just yeah. wanted to talk yeah. about it. <laughs> so what? Like okay, so let's let's talk about that then. Why do you think it's, in your opinion, has it been embraced so much by the hockey community? Fortnite. Yeah. I think it's just it's a way because like you can play with friends and for me I, I played a, a bunch with my teammates this year just that it's but like one of the best things you can do with your friends it's honestly like it's it's awesome to play with my teammates and stuff and just that bonding it, it was really special. Yeah, no, I it just it, it's it's interesting. Fortnite is is definitely something that's been embraced a lot by hockey players. Um, but what do you what do you kind of think about um just the landscape of social media with hockey players? I mean, this is a uh, there's the pros and cons of it. I mean, uh, I find it interesting because you've had the privilege to uh, represent Canada at the international stage, and there's been opportunity. There's been um situations where hockey canada has told you guys not to use your phones because it could be a distraction so what do you kind of think about that is it a distraction is there a balance that you can achieve yeah for sure i think uh especially twitter there's a there's a lot of uh people tweeting out things about you and stuff and sometimes you know in those tournaments it can get pretty distracting when uh you got uh maybe you have a good game and there's a there's a bunch of tweets and you, you might be staying up late looking at the tweets so I think uh, I think it's definitely a distraction, but uh, you know, there's ways of balancing it. Um, you know, just uh, maybe sign out of Twitter or something, or sign out of those social media accounts when you're you're in the tournament, just to kind of focus. Or Hockey Canada takes away the phones just so they can have their players have 100% focus. So I think that's uh, really good. <clears throat> it's no surprise that the NHL is still I wouldn't say obsessed, but size is a factor. I always think they look at size. And you're a big kid. There's no, there, there, there's no, there's no surprise there. You have a big smile on your face. You're, you're yeah. big, you know. Um, do you, but a lot of people will talk about other elements of your game. You know what I mean? The ability to be a power forward, the ability to make some nice plays, and to put the puck in the net. But obviously, you know, um, your size is something that's gonna stand out, and you're okay with that, right? 
Oh, for sure. I think um, the size is one of my best attributes on on the ice. I think uh, being able to uh, when I'm against like smaller defensemen, I think it's uh, it's 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 easier for me to win the the puck battles and in the corners, and I think that's really going to help me um, make the jump to the next level. Um, being able to to be big and to uh, use my size to my advantage. What I find really interesting is um, when I've interviewed players in the past, I mean, you know, they talk about the NHL draft and we'll get to it. But, you know, the NHL Combine is another huge event right before that that I think needs a lot of attention on its own rather than the draft. Have you kind of been preparing for that um, mentally, physically, obviously? What are what have been kind of going what's been going through your head um, in regards to the uh, NHL Combine? Well, obviously, I, uh, I've been uh, doing some uh, off ice stuff, just trying to get stronger, get ready for the testing. But that the testing isn't really, um, it's not like the most important thing for me. I want to go in there and have uh, some good interviews and just, uh, I've been I've been practicing, doing some mock interviews and just, uh, I just want to be in, go in there and be confident and just kind of uh, show who I am and just uh, tell these teams like a little bit about myself. I mean, I'm no NHL GM, but hopefully this is some practice too. I mean, interviews, man. We, we got yeah. to do the interviews. Yeah, for sure. Um, I wanted to also touch base on the fact that you, uh, you're you from Ottawa. You played um, minor hockey. Well, you played midget AAA with Brockville Braves in the, the U18 league. And you actually came in when they... Uh, it was like the first year of the league, I believe you played. It was the U eighteen Triple A league. Um, I want I want to talk to you about hockey development. What have you kind of noticed um, in the last couple of years of playing? You know, uh, mid Triple A and junior hockey. Um, is it overall getting faster? Is it overall getting bigger and stronger? Is it more of a? If it, is it just an, an intellectual game? Is there some stuff that you've noticed in terms of the evolution of the game? I, oh, for sure. I think uh, we talk about speed. It's just that that's become, like, come along like such a big, it's been such a big gap. And, uh, you know, when like it, the game's getting faster, people are getting faster. I think uh, back in the day, it was all about size and strength and just being more gritty and, and bigger. But uh, I think in today's game, uh, I think it's all about the speed. Now, if you can't skate, then uh, I don't think you'll be able to play in the NHL. And uh uh, it's definitely really important and also uh, the intellectual part about it too. You need to be smart. You need to understand uh, how to play defense and where to go. And, and so I think that it's made a, a huge step in that way. And uh, I agree, yeah, the, the speed and the intellectual part of the game, for sure. Especially the if we talk about the OHL, I mean, the amount of skill on display in that league is incredible. And I'm sure a lot of uh, players like yourself, you all, uh, even players on your team, you know, Alan McShane, like I'm sure you all feed off each other's energy and skill sometimes. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I got the privilege to play with Alan McShane. Uh, pro- to me, he's one of the best playmakers in the OHL. So I kind of, uh, we fed off each other. You know, I, uh, I played that more of a power forward, kind of get the puck, uh, get it back in front of the net and score. So uh, definitely use some of his skill set to kind of, uh, to help each other out and get us better. You got to play uh, for Team Canada in the Ivan Alinka. You got to play for Canada in the U18s. You played in the Top Prospects game. Who has been some of? Who have been some players that you weren't necessarily familiar with that you saw at these events and you were like, "Wow, these are very good players." Uh, definitely uh, Adam Boquist, especially at the Ivan Alinka. I think uh, he was definitely one of the best players there, and he was uh, the first time I ever got to see him was at the Alinka. I was, I was pretty impressed with him playing. Uh, some of the some of the Team Canada guys that I, I didn't necessarily know, like Smith, Ty Smith, uh, he's an excellent player, a really good guy too. Um, so it was nice to kind of meet him and to 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 learn a little bit off him. Absolutely, I I think it's safe to say that you know the World Junior Hockey Championship is one of those events that has allowed junior hockey and the CHL, you know, the OHL, the Quebec Major Hockey League, WHL, to be in the limelight a lot more. Like a lot of people now. Um, I think with the advent of social media and just the exposure that, you know, TSN and other networks have given this tournament, it's really kind of uh, allowed players to kind of get promoted and, and have good exposure in the CHL. My, my question to you is, now that there's kind of more exposure, I find it very interesting because you have a job on the ice, you know, to play hockey, but you also have a job off the ice. You, you're, you're a role model to, for a lot of these, you know, kids and these Oshawa General fans that come out and see you and meet you. It's interesting because 
you know, there's it's such a long road ahead now to the NHL, but you know, you have to act like a pro at the OHL level. I find that really interesting. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like you mentioned, there's there's fans and stuff that uh, follow you, so you got to make sure that you're you're professional and that you keep it uh, keep it professional and and your Instagram and all the Twitter and social medias. You got to keep it clean because uh, there's there's young kids that uh, look up to you and they're they're following you to see uh, what you do and what your life's about, and they don't necessarily want to see um, you know some some immature stuff. So you got to make sure to be uh, professional. Um, also, uh, oh. sorry, <laughs> you're um, you're representing your uh, your OHL club too, or your whatever team you play for the club. So you got to make sure that you're smart because it's not just you you're affecting if you post some stupid stuff. So, absolutely, and I'll, and also you know it's just you see it with you know the community. Uh, the the community is so involved with o, the OHL team specifically. I mean, yeah. you know the Ottawa Sixty Sevens, the Oshawa Generals, um, and it's it's one of those things where. Um, I just thought that interesting because you have a job on the ice, but you have a job off the ice. You're kind of a leader in the community, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to the most? I mean, there's a lot of work to, to be done, but you know, there, there, it, you're at a point in your career where it's, it's like you've accomplished so much, but it's, it's not even, like you haven't even, one can make an argument, you haven't even put a dent into it. Like there's so many possible events down the road. There's a lot of hard work is going to be involved. But what are you kind of looking forward to the most? I mean, aside from, you know, possibly the NHL draft, but I'm sure there's like, you know, some stuff that you want to kind of accomplish on your road there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to take it in, really. Um, I Like just thinking about it, you're talking to NHL club teams, which is just kind of, like mo- blowing my mind as we speak, um, but you're right. There, there is a, a long way to uh, where I want to be, and my goal is just to play in the NHL. And there's a lot of work to be done, and I, I recognize that uh, all of the accomplishments that I've done. But I'm thinking uh, for the future, I, I set myself uh, a goal of uh, trying to make the World Junior Team at some point. So that's definitely going to be something that's uh, on my radar, uh, and uh, hopefully I can. Um, be able to have the privilege to put on the Canadian sweater again. That's an accomplishment that's just skyrocketed to the top of the list of what players want to accomplish. Like everyone wants to play in that tournament. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, I mean, it's the best of the best. So uh, they obviously want to be there uh, representing your country, and uh, yeah, really exciting. For sure. Is 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 there also um has there been like what are your because uh, I find it interesting your father played in the CFL what's he thinking about all this I mean you know you brought you brought it up at the beginning of the interview that you know he, you, you tried hockey you didn't like it what's he kind of thinking about this I mean he was once a professional athlete and now his son is is is, is on the on the path yeah he's been uh he's been I don't think I would be in the position I am right now if it weren't for him uh you know, being a professional athlete, he's kind of uh, he's kind of shown me uh, what it takes to to go to be a professional, to to how to hold yourself and uh, and how to be be a professional. So uh, yeah, like like I said, he's just he's been great. Uh, I don't think I would have uh, I would be here if it weren't for him. So he's been great. Mm-hmm. You mentioned Fortnite, but I'm hoping you're not going to mention you know like country and fishing. But like, what are some other things? That are because everyone mentions you know you ask you ask hawk players what do you like to do off the ice and there's like three things they always mention oh I like to you know listen to country music go fishing go to the cottage are there other things that you like to do that uh, aren't those three things I mentioned that that are that that or there's some stuff about Sir Noel that people don't maybe know about uh. I think I'm an above average uh, ultimate frisbee player. If, uh, ah. <laughs> I really enjoy playing ultimate frisbee. Uh, it's pretty fun just throwing it around at the the cottage with the, you know my friends and stuff. So cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, um, and then a couple more questions to sort of wrap up too. Um, if, if you would, uh, let's talk about your um your uh, experience representing hockey Canada um you know it, it's it must like what kind of goes through your mind when you get the call not necessarily getting to like getting the camp but like when you get the call or when you get the notification that you've made that team what's going through your head that moment well I mean like it's just it's unbelievable like you think 
there's only like 25 or 22 players like in Canada for my age that can be picked onto the team. And so like, you gotta like, it's, it's such an honor. And you know, like you talk about it with your friends, um, they're, they're super psyched for you. And then they like, they wish that they are in the position and they're just like, they're so glad for you. And, and you just think it's, it's su- such an honor to be, to be able to uh, put on the Jersey. There's a lot of talk about you, you know, um, possibility of, you know, you go into the first round of the NHL draft, you know, certain teams that are looking at you. There's going to be all these things on social media. How are you, what what have you been doing to, um, in terms of, I mean, you know, you want to embrace a little bit of it because it's an exciting time, you know, you're going to, you're going to see people saying things about you and it's, it's, it's cool that you're getting all this, you know, attention, but uh, have you struck a balance where you're able to kind of balance it out so that you're not maybe thinking about it too much or has it kind of been difficult to kind of just cancel out all the noise? You know, I, you're right. I, I've, uh, there's been a lot and, uh, you know, I just try to, since I've been dealing with some of it with my teammates like uh, Alan McShane, who's kind of been in the same position as me and, and Nico Gross. Uh, we've kind of helped each other out just to kind of uh, block it out, I guess, and not really listen to it too much because, uh, like you said, it's an honor, but uh, it also can it can get to your head. So you definitely want to just kind of uh, keep it in the back of your head, but not really focus too much on it and just focus on going out there and uh, playing hockey and doing what you love. And the CHL and playing, you know, um, uh, in the OHL, do you think that people, because, you know, you start, you play AAA, and then you go and play OHL, do people realize how big and hard the jump is in your books? Because it's a huge jump. It's it's like way bigger, way stronger. Do you think people are aware of this, or do you think people are, ca- are caught by surprise once they go to an OHL camp and, like, how different of a game it is? Yeah, for, well, for my experience, uh, just from from playing uh, with Brockville and then making that jump, it was it was huge. Like my first year uh, going into training camp, I was super nervous and uh, see a bunch of older guys. I got to play with Sorelli. Like he was uh, he was unbelievable. He kind of he taught me a lot, and um, it was good to learn from someone like that. So uh, yeah, it's definitely a huge jump. I think uh, for me, it caught me by surprise. I didn't really expect it to be like as professional as it is. Uh, it's, it's, it's not too far off the NHL, uh, for, as, um, like for professionalism. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that, uh, it definitely catches people off, off surprise. For sure. Well, I think we'll wrap up with Sarah. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Um, all the best for the, you know, the NHL combine and the NHL draft. I mean, you've come such a long way and I, I hope you just take it all in and no matter what happens, just enjoy it all, man. Seriously. Sure. Definitely earned it. Where can people follow you on social media? Uh, I've got a, uh, a Twitter, um, Saren underscore Noel. Uh, and uh, my Instagram is Saren.Noel88. Perfect. Well, uh, until next time, all, uh, all the best for the uh, NHL draft, like I said. And uh, good to speak to you. Hopefully, we can have you on again soon. All right. Thanks, Petey. No problem. Well, this has been Pop Turnitin. You can pre- previous episodes, Pop Turnitin, youtube.com slash Pop for the video episodes, and then iTunes, Spotify for the audio episodes. Until next time, this is Sarah Noel and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnitin. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnitin on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnitin on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.